The NASCAR Wheel and Euro Series returns to Brands Hatch in early June for American Speed Fest 6. The event is a favourite with UK race fans and the drivers too. Thousands of fans flock to see their heroes and some pure NASCAR Wheel and Euro Series racing. Welcome along to Brands Hatch for round five of the 2018 NASCAR Whelan Euro Series. The format for the weekend, well, we're split into two divisions. There are four races per weekend. Elite one is for the pro drivers, where Fred Gavion is the championship leader. And elite two is for the young and the amateur drivers. Wilfred Busena leads the championship, coming into a packed Brands Hatch circuit this weekend. Well, the car's heading down towards the end of pit lane, ready for what will be 30 lap races for both Elite 1 and the Elite 2 division around this 1.94 kilometer or 1.2 mile Brands Hatch Indy circuit. Well, in Francia Corte last time out, Alan Day, the reigning champion, looked unstoppable at the wheel of his number 54 Cal Racing Chevrolet. He came through to claim the first win of the weekend and his third already in the 2018 championship. But exclusion from the race win in the second race of the weekend means that Fred Gavion at the wheel of the RDV competition Toyota Camry leads the championship coming into this weekend. Well, the whole of Brands Hatch is transformed into a little piece of America for the American Speed Fest event each year. And it brings crowds in their thousands to come along and soak up the fun, soak up the sunshine and enjoy the Americana. It's American Speed Fest 6, and whilst the NASCAR Wheel and Euro Series provides some of the on-track action, there's lots to keep everybody entertained off-circuit, young and old. The British crowd know their Americana, and they arrive in their thousands in their American machines to enjoy the fun and the sun on the 1.2-mile Brands Hatch Indy Circuit, which never disappoints when it comes to racing action. We caught up with British driver Alex Sedgwick to show us round a lap. Hi everyone, I'm Alex Sedgwick and here's a lap of Brands Hatch. So uh, we're heading up to Paddock Hill just here, completely blind this corner, third gear and um, it's terrifying. Uh, completely blind and then the track drops away, you see where you're going, pin the throttle and uh, make a pass just here on the Pegasus car, then hard on the brake, down to second, trying to get it stopped for Druids. And once again, full power, sliding the car out, spinning up the wheels, up to third gear, down to Graham Hill, hard on the brakes again, over the kerb, back on the power, the car's moving around the whole time here, and then running all the way down the back straight, up to third gear, into probably the hardest corner on the track, over the kerb, and then just getting held up a little bit, down to second, and then once again, turning into the right, really hard to get on the power out of here, Feather in the throttle all the way past the pit exit, then up to third, full power, and away you go. And there's a lap. Qualifying, it was championship leader Fred Gavion that claimed his second pole position at Brands Hatch. His Toyota Camry from RDV competition going beautifully well. The Racers Motorsport Ford of Giammarco Urkeli would line up second on the grid in the hands of the 2015 Elite Two champion. And Alan Day, the reigning champion at the wheel of his Cal Racing machine, would sit there third with Loris Hazemans with his Hendrix Motorsport number 50 Ford on row number two. So the car's heading round the circuit, ready for this first race of the weekend. Stinis Longin and Mark Goosens on row number three. Nicola Rocca returning to the championship and double former champion Anthony Kumpen on row number four. And row five is Alex Sedgwick and Francesco Cini. Buckle up, we are about to go green here at Brands Hatch with round five of the 2018 NASCAR Wheel and Euro Series. We go green, it's a great start from Fred Gavion from pole position. 
He propels the Toyota up towards turn one, Paddock Hill Bend, and takes up the lead of the race. Everybody safely through the first corner. It is Gianmarco Urkeli who is there in second position at the wheel of the Ford. And third by the look of things, going side by side, is Loris Hazeman side by side, but round the outside at turn two of Alan Day, and they're still side by side. Heading down in towards turn three, Graham Hill Bend. Loris Hazemans has the position. The Dutchman goes through ahead of the Israeli, the reigning champion, as they head down towards the sweeping, very fast left-hander at turn number four and up towards almost the never-ending turn five here. It's just five turns on this 1.2-mile circuit, and it looks as though largely the first lap has gone to plan for everybody, and particularly the championship leader, Fred Gabion, twice a runner-up in the NASCAR Wheel and Euro Series. He leads the pack as they head round through the complete lap number two and it certainly looks as though Gianmarco Urkeli is also there in second place in fourth place the reigning champion Alan Day coming under a little bit of pressure here he's got Mark Goosens at the wheel of the Brax racing machine the blue car with the day glow flashes to it right behind him the Chevrolet Camaro can't go through this lock brakes from Alan Day at the wheel of his Toyota for this weekend he still hangs on to the position as they propel themselves down the hill back up the hill again towards turn number two off and in the background somebody's got into the barriers there and I do fear that's the number 27 car of Angelo Rigari who has gone into the barriers you can see the enormous cloud of dust you can't quite as yet see the BVR Motorsport Ford Mustang but that brings about the safety car period the car is cleared up and we're about to go racing once more it's another good start from Fred Gavion from pole position and Loris Hazemans is looking to try and squeeze his way through now by the look of things up into second place Mark Goosens up the inside of Giammarco Urkeli there's contact between them Urkeli goes round Alan Day has to take to the gravel in avoidance he is able to dig his way back out but that has tumbled him down through the order there and as for Giammarco Urkeli well I do fear his car has ended up in the gravel trap in fact yep there it is at Paddock Hill Bend in need of recovery so we get the race back underway again and it's another good start from Fred Gabby on the pack charges its way up towards Paddock Hill Bend as we ride on board with Stinis Longin 2016 Elite 2 champion he's sitting behind Anthony Kumpen's car Loris Hazemans just runs a little bit wide and kicks the dust up in third place which might allow Kumpen up the inside as the pack file their way through turn number two you can see them single file order at the front but side by side further down through the order. Fred Gabion desperate to try and claim what for him would be his first win in the NASCAR Wheel and Euro Series on British soil. He's had nine wins so far in his NASCAR Wheel and Euro Series career, but he's coming under pressure from Mark Goosens. Loris Hazemans in the black car with the stripes down the centre of it sits there in third. Anthony Cooper in fourth. The British driver, the blue car with its red flashes, Alex Sedgwick in fifth place. And Roman Inietta there, by the look of things, gets tangled up with Alexander Graf and the Swede ends up in the gravel trap at turn number five. So that at the moment is being covered by localised yellow flags. We haven't gone full course caution here, but it is still the Frenchman Fred Gabion that leads the race. The Belgian Mark Goosens in second position, looking to try and apply the pressure. And there's pressure being applied to that car as well. Stenis Longin, the number 11 PK car sport machine, under pressure from Martin Dubeck and 2000 Monster Energy NASCAR champion Bobby Labonte, by the look of things, is not that far behind as well. So here they come. Over the start-finish line, another lap completed in this fifth round of the 2018 championship season for the Elite One. And Stenis Longjean's on the grass by the look of things, heading up towards turn five. Big, big, big mistake. Tail end of the car got away from him. He's still rally-crossing his way back onto the tarmac, but that is going to drop Stenis Longjean a long, long way through the order. His father, Bert, returning to the championship this year as well, and it's the first time the two of them have raced together. Loris Hazeman's under enormous pressure. Anthony Kumpen gets a great run coming out of turn five but still, for the moment, has to hang on to fourth position. He tries to switch back on the exit. He needs to be careful. He's got Alex Sedgwick, the British driver, right behind him as well. They come up towards the break area for turn number two, uh, but it is still Loris Hazemans from Anthony Kumpen. This time, Alex Sedgwick's trying around the outside. He's got to be aware that he's got Francisco Cini at the wheel of the number 12 Solaris motorsport car, not that far behind. Then there's Lucas Lassar in the blue machine, and that'll be Christophe Bouchou. It's the next of the runners, so this is a great fight going on for third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, and eighth places that are all pretty much together, working their way through traffic as well. But this is great racing. This is pure racing. This is NASCAR racing as they feed their way out of turn number five, over the start-finish line once more. The battle for the final place on the podium is more than on, and Loris Hazemans is really having to soak up the pressure again. Anthony Kumpen gets a great run alongside him, but no more than that. 
tries to get a later apex to switch back on the exit of the corner, but Loris Hazemans is wise for that, so Kumpanen still sitting behind the third place car, Alex Sedgwick this time trying all the way around the outside of Anthony Kumpanen, he's got to be careful on the exit of the corner, he doesn't get pushed wide, he's got two wheels on the kerb, that means that the orange and black car of Francisco Cini now gets up the inside, just enough between the pair of them, but Alex Sedgwick loses the place, Loris Hazeman still clinging by his fingertips onto third, but Kumpen has gone through by the look of things, yeah, a great run from Anthony Kumpen, he's been very patient trying to squeeze his way through up into third, and now the double former champion, the Belgian, at the wheel of the number 24 car, is up into third place as those two cars are setting about it for the lead of the race, Fred Gavion still leading, still under pressure, from the Brax racing machine in the hands of Mark Goosens, that blue car with its day glow flashes, lock brakes from Fred Gavion so hard is he trying to try and keep the Toyota in the lead of the race and Kumpen in third having just taken third runs wide at Druid's corner that allows Loris Hazemans to squeeze his way through, Francisco Cini's gone through the light blue car of double former champion Lucas Lassar has also gone through, Lucas claimed his championship back in 09 and 2010, but Kumpen is on the attack again straight away, they bounce off each other, Alex Sedgwick has had his pocket picked and has gone to the back of that pack as well, he's now behind Christophe Bouchou at the wheel of the number 66 Dexwet car, so there's been shuffling in the order, that is absolutely for sure, and well, Loris Hazemans is now somehow, I'm not quite sure how, back into third place once more, and poor old Anthony Kumpen, who'd just taken third place, but shuffled down into sixth position following that very small mistake up at turn number two, which is this corner, Druid. You're heading uphill, you could break very late for the corner, but Kumpen must just have break that little bit too late and then couldn't get the car turned into the apex. Looks as though Nicola Rocca in the yellow car, the Cal Racing machine also did something similar there. He's now coming under pressure from the black machine with the orange flashes, which is Martin Dubeck, the Czech driver. But Loris Hazemans in his newly reacquired third place has got Francisco Cini right behind him at this stage. Francisco Cini, new team for this year, the Solaris Motorsport team, looking as though they possibly might be in for a podium spot if they could squeeze their way through a plus Loris Hazemans, who is running a defensive line up towards turn number two. And Francisco Cini throwing caution to the wind here, tries around the outside at turn two, needs to make sure he closes the door on Lucas Lassar, the two of them side by side through turn number three, Lassar raises the dust, that allows Anthony Kumpen to squeeze his way back through fantastic racing here, but Fred Gabion is looking good for the win his tenth win in the NASCAR Wheel and Euro Series Mark Goosens crosses the line in second place, but he's then subsequently given a penalty for the contact with Giamarco Urkeli. So it's Loris Hazemans who finishes in second position. And, well, Francisco Cini will be as pleased as punch. His best result of the season, the first podium for Solaris Motorsport. And for Fred Gavion, his first win since 2016. Let's hear from the winner. Yeah, and, you know, it was tough, you know, because... I I had a whole guy behind me, Marco Sainz, really fast uh, at the first part of the track, so he put lots of pressure on me, so it was really hard at the end, but, uh, but the, the car was quite, quite good, you know. I have a little of a uh, wheel block, but uh, it was enough to win today, and I'm, I'm really happy for the team. We have made a, a, a great job since the first weekend, you know, and, uh, and it's a great reward for us. And, uh, for all the work we, uh, we've put on this car, so, so I'm really happy and, uh, and we will see tomorrow, but it was a long race, you know, with lots of uh, safety car and uh, it, was, it was really hard to keep the tire warm, so no, I'm really happy, so we'll see tomorrow. And rightly so, Fred Gabion should be very happy, had to work very hard for that race win and he wasn't to know, of course, at the time that Mark Goosens would subsequently be dropped down through the order and classified down in 17th position. So the champagne flies on the podium at Brands Hatch at round five of the championship. Second overall in the race, but a win in the Junior Trophy for Loris Hazemans from the number 90 machine of Alex Sedgwick, who was second, and Tom Ferrando was third in the Junior Trophy classification. In the Challenger Trophy, Dario Carzo knocked up his second win of the season from the number two machine of Kenko Mura, and third was Didier Beck. Well, before each race of the NASCAR Wheel and Euro Series, there's the opportunity for the fans to head on to the grid and soak up the atmosphere and really feel the tension on the build-up to each one of the races that we have. It also gives them the opportunity to get up close and personal to the cars and the stars of the NASCAR Wheel and Euro Series, whether it be for photographs or, of course, for autographs as well. We managed to catch up with a special guest at Brands Hatch, Chad Siegler, who is the Vice President of International Business Development and Partnerships at NASCAR. 
this is a this is an absolutely exciting event for us in NASCAR. Um, walking through this, this this event is what NASCAR is all about. It's close side by side racing. It's a lot of fan engagement. Um, if you look around here, fans are walking around. They're having a great time. There's a lot of families out here. So it's a great day for NASCAR uh, in Europe. The experience here today at Brands Hatch has been it's been refreshing, it's been exciting. It's also very similar to what you see back in the United States. Uh, the thing that we always try to do at, all, at NASCAR races is make it something in addition to the racing that it's a fan friendly and a family friendly event. So for us to be here today and see a lot of engagement in the midway, you see families walking around enjoying racing and more importantly enjoying NASCAR style of racing. It's, it's something exciting for us, it's something we're excited to be a part of and it's, uh, it's a great day to be out here. Last time out in Francia Quarter, Felipe Ribello claimed his third career win in the NASCAR Wheel and Euro Series. But the other win went the way of a debut winner, Guillaume Dumery, delighted with his first victory in Euro NASCAR. Wilfred Boussena leads the championship coming into this weekend by 11 points from Guillaume de Flandre, who is just a point ahead of Nicolas Risitano in third. In qualifying, Guillaume de Flandre put his Memphis Racing number 77 Chevrolet onto pole position. That would be the first ever pole position for Memphis Racing, a new team to the championship for this year. Felipe Ribello's number 11 PK Carsport Chevrolet was second quickest during the qualifying session. Of course, he won last time out in Frontier Quarter. And third was Ulysse Del So at the wheel of his RDV competition Toyota Camry the car that had already claimed a win in the hands of Fred Gavion in Elite One. And third returning to the championship for Michu Motors this weekend was the number 33 car of Freddie Nordstrom. The leading rookie on the grid would line up fifth, which is Florian Venturi, with Francia quarter winner Guillaume Dumery on the outside of row number three. And Wilfred Brucena had Nicholas Risitano for company on row number four. So the cars are heading up towards the start of the race and we'll buckle up. We're about to go green again here at Brands Hatch at Speedfest 6. The lights go out and they charge their way up towards Turn 1 for the first time as we ride on board with reigning Ladies' Cup champion Carmen boyt Shill, who is further down through the order to her right-hand side, Francesco Parley at the wheel of the number 31 car. They are all safely through Paddock Hill Bend and Turn number 2 Druids for the first time and they thread their way back downhill once more with, by the look of things, out front and leading the race, Guillaume de Flandre, the Belgian driver, leads the race from the Brazilian Felipe Rebelo in second position. Yuli Stelso is there in third place at this stage, and it's going to be Freddy Nordstrom, the Mavi Michu Motors car, sitting there in fourth position, but under pressure from Guillaume Dumery, who's right behind him. You can see all of the field just carving their way through the sweeps at turn number four and turn number five, but over the start-finish line, first lap completed, out front, and it's the first lap that's been led by Memphis Racing. It's only their third race meeting, and well, Guillaume de Flandre, who claimed a win last year, it was the first ever win he claimed for Racing Total, is looking to try and claim another first win, but for a different team this weekend. Onto the brakes, round through turn number two, they'll go the number 77 Chevy, leading from the number 11 Chevy in second place. There's a little bit of dust just kicked up there, and that is Max Lance, who's gonna lose a position here if he's not careful, trying to squeeze his way through. It's Pierluigi Veronese, and it looks as though the pair of them have made contact round through turn number two. Veronese is retiring on the exit of the corner, and as for Max Lancer, well, we couldn't quite see ultimately what happened to his car as the side-to-side -side contact was made between the two. Sliding the car round through turn number four, pushing on comes Guillaume de Flandre in the lead of the race. Needs to be careful he doesn't overwork the tyres. Each car gets four tyres for the weekend. After qualifying, two go to the Elite One driver, two go to the Elite Two driver, and the other two tyres are carried over from a previous round. So tyre preservation is a consideration as Guillaume Dumery is lucky to try and squeeze his way up the inside of the number 32 car. Florian Venturi, the Frenchman, having none of it. The leading rookie at this stage in this race bounces over the curbs on the way out of turn number three. So Guillaume Dumery, a winner in Francia Quarter, claiming his first NASCAR Wheel in Euro Series win, looking to try and squeeze his way through. He's got to watch his mirrors, though, because the number 37 car of Wilfried Boussena 
is right behind him. Busena having claimed this championship back in 2009, but safety car is coming out so we can get Pierluigi Veronese's car out of harm's way. Shouldn't take long, so already the cars are ready to get things back underway once more, up towards the start-finish line, where the green flag waves, and we're back to racing once more at round five of the Elite Two Championship for the NASCAR Wheel and Euro Series for 2018. And Guillaume de Flandre just holds off the charge of Felipe Ribello as we go back on board with Carmen Voigt-Gil. Down through the dip, heading up towards the braking area for turn number two. And that is Julian Schell, who's locked the brakes on board the number 29 car and has made, well, very light contact with the barriers. But that car is rather in the head-on, and hopefully they can just cover it with localised yellows for the moment. The race continues. It really was a very good restart from Guillaume de Flandre, who has opened up the gap between himself and the PK Car Sport Chevy of Felipe Ribello, so it's a Chevy 1-2 at this stage. Further down through the order, the number 50 car in the hands of Dietrich Siersens. The Belgian driver has got his hands rather full, to say the least, by the look of things. He is having a squabble with the recovering number 41 car of Max Lancer, and right behind Max Lancer, that looks as though it's Tom Boonen, the Belgian driver, the former world cycling champion that's rolling his sleeves up and getting stuck in as well. So great fights going on further down through the order here as they bounce their way over the curves, turning their way up towards turn number five. The number 91 car, the blue car with the day glow flashes, is Tom Bonin looking to try and attack the repainted car for this weekend of Max Lauter, the club's motorsports Ford Mustang under pressure, and Tom Bonin's got a run, he's got the inside line, and he's going to go through by the look of things. Yep, so the Belgian goes through ahead of the Italian as the squabble at the front still continues. It is still... Guillaume de Flandre leading the race, but now Felipe Ribello is under pressure, and under pressure from Florian Venturi, who has picked his way through up into third position at the wheel of the go-fast racing machine. Over the start-finish line, they'll go. We're side by side further back. Elise Delso is going to lose out here by the look of things. Wilfried Boussen has got the inside line up towards turn number one. They need to watch their mirrors as well, because Mattia Dreza, at the wheel of the number 56 Cal racing car, is not too far away, but the Chevrolet can't squeeze its way through the yellow car, so he has to sit behind currently. This is a great three-way fight by the look of things. Wilfried Boussena, Ulysse Delso, then Mattia Dreza, and then beginning to close in on them all is the number 33 car of Freddy Nordstrom, who's dropped down a little bit through the order, considering the pace he had in the early stages. Race leader through shot, here comes the squabble for second and third, everybody queuing up to be fourth currently. The best of the fight is probably for second and third places. The Brazilian driver, Felipe Ribello, PK Car Sport, his Chevrolet hanging on to it, despite everything that the go-fast racing Ford Mustang of Florian Venturi, the Frenchman, is throwing at him. Nose to tail, round through turn one, Paddock Hill Bend once more, where the circuit really drops away. You have to commit to the apex before you even see it at Paddock Hill Bend. As soon as you do, the circuit really drops away. Here's Max Lancer under pressure from Carmen Boyk. He runs wide at turn number five and pops the car into the gravel trap, sideways into the gravel. And uh, well, that is the race run for the number 41 car. The Club Motorsports Ford Mustang has come to rest in the gravel trap. Localized yellows, hopefully, as the battle for second and third goes past that point of the circuit. And Felipe Ribello still under enormous pressure from Florian Venturi. Despite everything, Felipe Ribello is still, still, still just and only just clinging on to second position. And now that they're starting to squabble, they're slowing each other up a little bit and it's allowing the car in fourth place, Guillaume Dumery, the number 24 car, to close in, but he has got other things to worry about as well. He's got Wilfred Boussena right behind him, and then the black and white car, the number three machine, in the hands of Ulysse Delso. So fights going on wherever you look around the circuit, and probably the only person that hasn't got anybody to squabble with at the moment is Guillaume de Flandre, because he's pulling away all of the time. He's got a lead that's over two seconds now between himself and Felipe Ribello. Through and over the start finish line, another lap chalked into the book. A little bit of dust at turn number one, Paddock Hill Bend, but all of the front runners safely still on track and still pressing on as best they can. And here, by the look of things, comes our race leader, Guillaume de Flandre. He is on for his second NASCAR Wheel and Euro Series win, and it will be a first win for Memphis Racing at only their third ever NASCAR Wheel and Euro Series race meeting. Over the start finish line comes Guillaume de Flandre. He will be as pleased as punch with that, and for second, place the charge to the line sees Felipe Ribello just in his Chevrolet finish in second place the Ford of Florian Venturi finishes in third place Guillaume Dumery's Chevrolet is in fourth place and Wilfred Boussena crossed the line in fifth but he's given a 30 second penalty for avoidable contact so Guillaume de Flandre clambers out of the number 77 Memphis racing Chevrolet and well there's a big smile on the youngster's face and rightly so big thumbs up from him that 
is his second NASCAR Wheel and Euro Series win, and he's going to celebrate in style on the Brands Hatch Speedfest podium. Well, in the rookie classification, Florian Venturi took a win from the number eight car of Nicolas Ricitano, and Tom Bonin came home to complete the podium for the rookies. The Legend Trophy honours went the way for the fourth time this season of Jerry DeVert from Simone Loretti, who was second, and Marco Stiep for Racing Total finished third. And in the Lady Trophy, it was a fourth win of the season for Carmen Boyk Schill, ahead of her main rival, number 54, Ariana Casoli. That's all from round five. Join us for more from round six.